Bill Lockwood is here, our friend, one of the smartest white men on this side of heaven, Bill Lockwood. And Bill, he's a writer, radio host at American Liberty with Bill Lockwood, teacher in Wichita Falls, Texas, preacher at Our Park Church of Christ. And we're going to tell you how to get to all of that. He is an amazing person. Really smart as Nighty going north. Smart as <laughs> Nighty going north. Bill, good morning. Good morning, Jesse Lee. How are you? Good morning, sir. All is well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. Good. Uh, we had some strong weather here, but. <laughs> oh, you have strong weather there? Well, we have in a lot of storms, a lot of rain. We've had about three inches of rain in uh, the last uh, 12 hours. Wow. So, maybe yeah, it's, it's really coming down. Maybe the Lord trying to clean up the illegal alien mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> you know, he's given us some responsibilities on that one as well, and I'm afraid we're failing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing to see it. I wanted to first talk to you about the aftermath of uh, Derek Chauvin's trial, where I believe an innocent cop, right. an innocent cop, has been put in prison. They're trying to destroy his life over an unemployed drug addict, George Floyd. What are you thinking about all this? Right. How do you see all this? Well, I, I think that uh, we have lost our soul in America as far as um, as far as ability to think clearly. Uh, for one thing, I agree that uh, Chauvin uh, was not guilty of murder. Yeah. You know, the, the h highest uh, crime I think that uh, was was there was manslaughter. However, uh, it's turned into a not just a political circus, but it has turned into a black supremacy move here. Yeah. So you have Congresswomen Maxine Waters going there. Uh, you have uh, the one of the jurors of the trial, a woman, stated to the Minneapolis Star Tribune that she was afraid of reprisals against her own person and her personal property if they did not vote to convict him. That's the point is simply that the the blacks, Black Lives Matter, and the riotous Antifa mobs. They have America now by the nape of the neck, and they're shaking it, and they're they're demanding. Uh, what they want and we're not it seems that many people are so powerless to stop it so it's uh, even the, even the judge in the trial stated that you need to decide without fear of what the repercussions may be on this particular case so he was perfectly aware of what this had turned into be so that's that's how i see it and it's uh, here's another interesting thing i've wondered i've talked to several policemen and I have uh, asked the question, how is it that in one, uh, in one alleged offense that there are three different specific charges of it? You know, normally what I'm seeing or what I understand to be the case, and I'm not in law enforcement, but law enforcement officials tell me that if there's a, uh, for example, if they're arresting an individual who's running from a, a crime scene, and, uh, but they, they can only have one charge against him. So I, I don't know. Uh, what the full ramifications of all of that are, and I'm not sure about the Minneapolis Police Department, but I'll see that, say this. People see clearly that this is a black supremacy move in America, and uh, you have over 200 of the police force out of 850 in Minneapolis have already put in the retirement papers. They see the handwriting on the wall yeah. that the police are under attack in America. Local police are under attack. And that's where it's going. So it's going to a national police force, and that's what the globalists and uh, and all the people that in the streets of America who are really, and I hate to use this term, but that's this is how Lenin put it, useful idiots. That's how they're driving. That's what's driving here, and that's where it's headed. Amazing. Um, the person that said they were afraid that was on the jury, they were afraid not to find him uh, guilty. Can that person be arrested for making a decision out of fear, putting someone, destroying another person's life that might be innocent? Can that juror be put in jail? I don't, 
I don't know about that, Jesse. I, I'm not certain about that. I, I do think that um, even if that were the case, I doubt that that law would be enforced, uh, just like the other laws are not being enforced in America. We're changing the entire system to accommodate out of control, uh, the out of control black community in many areas. So, you know, this going on in the school systems, yeah. it's going on on the streets, it's going on in academia, and uh, that's what's happening. And so people need to uh, awaken to the fact that we are changing the system to accommodate this. And it's, uh, it's very, very sad. But the, the problem is that we go back to, once again, 75%, and as you know, of black children are in homes without fathers. They have no fatherly instruction, no fatherly guidance. Yeah. And so they grow up hating the system and hating white people. Many of them do. Yeah. Why then normally when a when a trial is so controversial like it is, they get a lot of media attention, the judge normally pro- prohibit prohibits the jury from watching the news, communicate with family members or anyone until the trial is over. I think they call it sequester or something like that. Why didn't they do that with this jury? Well, I, I do believe that uh, just as we're seeing at George Floyd Square in Minneapolis, I think that the uh, the Black Lives Matter are in control of the entire narrative here. And I'm, I think that the others are afraid to move and afraid to do things, uh, fearful that we're going to lose property and, and property damage will be astronomical and people's lives will be in danger and they don't want to see the rioting. And I just I think that's what's happening here. But because Black Lives Matter and other radical black people know that white people are afraid and they can get away with intimidating them, it's just going to get worse. It's not going to get better because white people are giving the blacks what they want. It's only bringing out the worst in them. It's not going to get better. They're going to have the riots. They're going to continue to burn, (laughs) rob, steal, and kill. That's not the way you deal with evil people. No, that's right. You know what? It's, it's getting so far out of control that I saw an article the other day in which uh, some are saying that um, the, the finger, uh, let's, no, let's say that um, the scanning cards is racist because uh, uh, the, the black people have to show the palms of the hands, the white side of their hands on certain in certain uh, scans. And so they say that's racist. <laughs> it's like, it, it, it just never stops. It, it never stops. As, as far as your imagination can go, that's where they go with it. And that's right. If you have, if you have children in the home and, and they continue to throw temper tantrums in the store in front of everybody and you give in continually, that doesn't help the situation. Right. It doesn't help out when they throw temper tantrums on the floor and you continue to do what the child demands to be done. And it might be just a two-year-old, but it's not going to get better. No, it's not. Uh, I, yesterday, I, I believe it was yesterday, we played a song by from Nickelodeon where they were calling the environment situation racist as well. And so everything is racist now. If you have a white toilet in your bathroom, it's racist. Yeah. So, you know, when, when you use a term, an over, uh, over term like that, or use it uh, overly much, you really lose content. People... People already are saying, you know, okay, of course, of course, we're all racist. Yeah, okay, everything's racist. Everything, everything that you do is racist. Uh, everything you think is racist. Uh, the toilets in your home are racist, and uh, so scanning cards is racist, and and demanding that people pay their uh, accounts on time that's racist. So everything's racist. So you lose content of what real racism is. You, you lose content of, of people having any kind of ill feelings toward another race. So it, it, there's it's. It's vacuous. It means nothing because it means everything. It means nothing. Yeah. Are you surprised that white people are so afraid of the blacks, knowing that black people are just going to turn everything into a ghetto when they get hold of it? Are you surprised that the whites are giving up America and just allowing the, the blacks to destroy it like this? They're just giving it over to the blacks, knowing that it's just going to end in in, in a ghetto, it just, it's, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. The country itself. Are you surprised that white men are just giving it over like that instead of putting up a fight? 
Well, I am I am saddened by it. I don't know if I'm really surprised. I've been I've been predicting that this would be the case in my own in my own soul for a long time. Uh, for one thing, uh, the colleges and universities have stultified our intelligence, have really have really blunted our critical thinking, and have really emasculated people from standing up for principles and. So when I see it, see, if I gauge it by looking at the churches, just for example, in the churches, yeah. and I'm in conservative churches, the churches of Christ are conservative. When I see in the churches, even in, in the churches of Christ or in, in churches that are conservative across the spectrum, a failure to preach the principles of Christ and the biblical principles of value and to call out what's happening in our society for fear of people not liking it and going to another church and and people taking away your paycheck and preachers just turning into soft putty in the pulpit. When I've seen that for the last 40 years, Jesse, I'm really not surprised that to see it with people who are not in the churches and who are simply in secularism. I'm not surprised at all. Amazing. Yeah, the churches for the most part are no good now. They're just... And they're just around the people, oh, the people lifting up, holding hands, waving their hands, carrying on while the country is falling apart. The children of Satan are putting them in bondage and they're doing nothing about it. I uh, never thought I would see that in my lifetime either. It's amazing to watch that happen. Also, I noticed that over the years, the Christians have been the Christians have been convinced to. uh that Christians should not be involved with government. They should not run for office. They should not get involved. And a lot of so-called Christians believe that. And now we have a secular government that are passing laws enslaving Christians because they hate Christianity. And so they're enslaving the Christians. Why wouldn't the Christians allow anyone to, to convince them that they should not be in government? They should not be involved in government. Well, that ha that reaches back at least as far as I can recall as in my studies to LBJ's period in the 1950s, where Lyndon B. Johnson uh, really stole an election for the Senate in the state of Texas, and uh, he had been opposed so vehemently by the Baptist churches and churches of Christ, and the preachers in the pulpits had been opposing him. So he so one of the things he did was he put into the IRS code that. Churches could not have anything to say from the pulpit about any political issue. And from that point forward, they all kind of they kind of backed out and said, well, we don't want to have anything to say about it, regardless of the fact that politicians are trampling over over religious principles, trampling over morality and common decency and erasing biblical value at every level of society, trampling it with hobnail boots. And yet preachers still do not want to preach out about it. The pulpits are too weak. They haven't stood for doctrine. That No one wants to defend their doctrine anymore, saying this is right and that's wrong. They don't want to do that yeah. anymore. So, you know, everything's just, everything's just I'll feel good, you feel good, and we'll feel good about ourselves, and we'll all have a personal relationship <laughs> with Jesus, and, and that's the end of the story, and that's, and that's how they go. What a mess. Um, there's something called, it is a mess. There, <laughs> there's something called the Equality Act. And there are places, uh, the Equality Act places LGBTQ in the Civil Rights Act. So they're trying to make LGBTQ be, become a civil rights, meaning that you can't discriminate against a wrong. If you, you got to hire these people, you got to treat them like they're just normal. What do you think about that? Well, you know, sodomy in this country is one of the banes of our society. It's it's a horrific crime against God, and it's not to say that other sins are not criminal also, but it is a it is specifically in the Bible. You know, the Bible shows us that there are some ramifications and influences of some sin that are more far reaching than simply if I tell a, a lie or I tell a white lie, not to not to justify anything. But there are some sins that have a lot more ramifications on society and upon uh, the culture that we live in. And homosexuality, sodomy, is one of them. Neil Gorsuch, who supposedly is a conservative 
set up by President Trump or put in uh, uh, that is uh, nominated by Trump and agreed by the Senate, put into the Supreme Court last summer, last summer included in the 1964 Civil Rights Act that non-discrimination on the basis of sex would have to include gender identity and perceived gender identity. So now colleges, Christian colleges, Christian universities, Christian schools, Christian high schools, Christian grade schools are going to be forced, and the Biden administration wasted no time in implementing this, in forcing Christian colleges, private institutions, to implement the 1964 Civil Rights Act in the basis of the LGBT and on the behalf of LGBTQ community. Amazing. Translated, that means you can't have girls' dormitories separated from men's. You can't have girls' sports separated from men's sports. You can't have girls' bathrooms separated from boys' bathrooms. You can't have anything like that. And so one college, the College of the Ozarks, just in the state of Missouri just the other day, filed a lawsuit about it. But and I and I appreciate that, but I'm going to say filing lawsuits is really I do not believe the answer. Right. I don't believe filing lawsuits at a in a system that is so corrupt is going to is going to be the answer. Really. Yep, I, I think people I think people need resistance, peaceful resistance to the government, nullification at a state level, and secession if necessary. I absolutely agree. I um I was um. There was a, a pastor in Canada who was having a service, and the cops showed up to try to force him to shut it down. But he ran them away. He ran them off, told me, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here now. Get out of here. And he ran them off. Yeah. And he said, well, you come back. If you come back, you better have a search warrant or something. Like that. And, and, um, I believe they came back or something, and he ran them off again. He ran them off again. And and there are Christians out there saying that they thought that that pastor should not have spoke, spoken that way. He should be nicer. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. So the, so the radical left, the communist, socialist, LGBTQ community— and the Black Lives Matter, the neo-Marxists have already got a plan for this. And that is what's happening in Minneapolis, going back to what we started with. Minneapolis, Minnesota, the whole narrative now from that, as well as what's going on in North Carolina this morning and other, other places, is that there is systemic racism in policing. Rashida Tlaib, uh, one, of the, one of the congresswomen, has said that there's no reforming it. So what is their plan? Their plan is a national police force to have it nationalized from Washington, D.C. So what does that mean? Well, it would be similar to having United Nations blue helmeted people from a foreign country coming in here because that's just about what it's going to be like. You just get a bunch of people from Michigan or maybe another nation and you bring them in here to have a national police force and coming to local communities. And the disarming of citizens is going to take place as quick as you can bat your eye because yeah. it's not going to be a local police force where the police are attending church, going to the grocery stores, going to the movies, going to restaurants with some of the local citizens, and you're all friends and everybody knows each other. We elected a local sheriff, and the local sheriff, and our local sheriff is named David Duke, a great conservative man. That's going to be gone. They're going to have people from a national board from Washington, D.C., or from, from the state of Minnesota or the state of Michigan or wherever, put in here in Wichita Falls, Texas, and they will have no problem in disarming the populace today. And I believe that all they're going to have to do is set up roadblocks outside in, in the city somewhere, or outside on the highways, and say, all the cars are stopping. They're going to say, we're going to search your cars for guns, and people will give them up, and that'll be the end of the story. They already have uh, what they call a no-fly list for some of the people who went to the, yeah. the Trump rally. And they are already, if you attended the rally, they have now put you on a no-fly list. In the United States of America, you don't have the freedom to even attend a rally. Otherwise, you can't fly your own country. 
So this is exactly why I say to sue at court of law is, is pointless because the system itself is systemically, and at this point it is systemically wrong in the sense that our Constitution supposedly guarantees us that we're going to have to have evidence against us in order to even be arrested or having any kind of action taken against us. I can't have a person show up at this house and want to come in and do a search of my house or put me on a put me on a no driving list without evidence because our system says you have to have evidence. The local police have to have evidence. They have to go to a judge. And he has to sign off on a warrant saying that is sufficient evidence. That is a protection of people. But we've thrown that all out the window. And so now what you have, OK, if you are associated with Trump, if you attended the Trump rally, if you voted Republican, if you vote, if you're on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, you're going to be on a no fly list. And that's how they're doing it. Absolutely throwing law and order out the window. We thought law and order was simply a Trump slogan. No, that's reality that yeah. we're losing as rapidly as we speak. Are people so demoralized and dumbed down and on pot that they don't see what's coming down the pipe? What is it that they, do they see what's really going on here? The regular folks. Well, I think that a lot of people. I think regular folks do, but once again, many are fearful to speak out. You, people don't speak out, uh, whether it be in the local government, uh, when they see it, they don't speak out of the local school systems or in the, in the state school systems. They, don't speak, they certainly don't speak out in the university classrooms uh, because they're going to be booted out on their, on their ear. Yeah. Uh, they don't speak out in the military they, uh, because coming down from the top down, so as power is gravitating to the top, and the rules are beginning to, to be onerous. People are afraid to speak out, and because of the repercussions, until until someone's uh, bold enough to say, "Hey, this is this is wrong." Uh, listen, Jesse. Even in the school system, they have what is called restorative justice in Dallas public school system. Restorative justice, basically, it goes back to this this the Saul Alinsky methodology, which we talked about. Uh, we've talked about before regarding a juvenile detention alternative initiative where the juvenile detention system, they say, okay, the problem is more blacks than the populace. The 13% of the American population is, is black, but we have the percentage in juvenile detention higher than the black, higher than 13%. So that proves that we are systemically racist because <laughs> the percentages are higher. We're not a question whether whether blacks are committing more crimes or not, or in the black community, but that's true. Yeah. In the black community, the, there are over 50% of the murders committed by blacks. Yeah. What's going on in Chicago is a perfect illustration, but people are afraid to say what I just said, because, oh boy, you are so racist to say it, but the facts don't, the figures don't lie. Yeah. But that's what they're doing, so they're assuming that, okay, blacks are being more uh, punished at a higher percentage rate than the population. Therefore, that shows that the system is systemically racist. Can you, is it possible to be born again of God, to become a son of God and have fear? Well, you know what? You sure you need to get rid of it. I would say this, that a person on hearing the gospel of Christ in Acts chapter 2 that repenting, you know, believing that Jesus resurrected from the dead, repenting of our sins, being baptized into Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. If a person heard one sermon, they can become a New Testament Christian. But as we proceed in Christ, as we grow and as we nurture ourselves in Christ upon his word, feasting upon his word, that casts out fear and causes us to be bolder. But it is true that babes in Christ, I believe, can be, as they come in, they might be fearful. But as they grow on, in the Word of God, we have to allow people to grow. And we have to give room for children in, in Christ to grow. As they grow into adulthood, they need to get rid of that and cast off that fear. They, um, um, for a while, I was saying that uh, Mommy Africa is coming to America. Over in Africa, South Africa, and Zimbabwe, other places, the blacks took over there. And 
what they have done is exactly what's happening in America now. They they took away the police force, the blacks uh, uh, are now taking the land away from the whites. They are robbing and raping and killing the whites in their homes, raping the women in front of the men right. along the roadside. They are they are because they've gotten rid of the police force. They are raping and killing and robbing, and nothing is being done about it. So the whites are have to either fend themselves or be taken out. That is now happening in America. And I, I've been saying to the white people, they're going to take your land in America. And lo and behold, now mm. they, they have replaced, they have placed all these radical black women and others in position of the government. They are now starting to take the land of white people. L.A. County Board uh, voted to return land to ancestors of black families. Um, and there's, this land is right on the beach, beautiful beach property. They are now about to take it away from the whites and give it to, to the blacks. And I, I, I tried to warn the people that because they won't speak up, that that will be happening in America, but most people didn't believe it. Now it's happening under the head of reparation. It also happened in Illinois, and it's starting to happen around this country. I have not followed that specific story. <clears throat> I do know what's going on in South Africa, and uh, that, once again, is simply communism, Marxism, neo-Marxism. It's all this is. And we have, I mean, this is a, we're in a, we're way down the track if that's already going on in America, yeah. we are way down the track. Bill, and, uh, hold on for me. Can you stay late. a little longer? Sure, I'd be happy to. All right, hold on for me. Let me take a quick break. Bill Lockwood is here, and it's amazing. The people love him. He knows the Constitution better than anybody else walking this earth. And uh, it's my joy to have him on. So, yeah, Bill, in L.A., uh, they are taking back the land. I mean, down in Redondo Beach, or one of those white, beautiful white areas down there, and they're giving it to the blacks. And without, uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to pay the folks for the land or what's going to happen. Okay. But uh, and they have in, um, I believe, in some parts of Illinois, they are give, giving black people money and all kind of crap going on, and. The blacks are not going to do anything with it for the good. They're just going to turn it into a ghetto. My question is, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen to the folks allowing South Africa to happen in America. Are you surprised that the blacks are allowing themselves to be used to usher in evil? They are happy to do it. They don't mind because they think they are getting something for nothing and they hate white people. Because of the destruction of their homes, black people, and not all, not all, not all, but most, they have no love. And so they are, like, joyful that they are being used to usher in evil. Are you surprised by that? Well, no, not really, because uh, it, it's it's almost it's such as a system of welfare. Uh, if we just take it back to welfare, if if I'm a politician— and I promise to take money from your neighbor and give it to you. I promise to give you money. Then I have just bought your vote. Yeah. And I may have lost his vote, but I've just gained yours. If I promise to give it to two people, then I've gained two votes versus one. So it's it's a matter of selfishness. It's a matter of self-centeredness. And that's what we've allowed to happen. We've been doing that for, well, I guess since the time of FDR, over 50 years We've had a welfare system set in place in this country that has eroded and corroded moral sensitivity, and we no longer have moral sensitivity at all as to saying what is right and what is wrong for a government to do. Yeah. Is it wrong to, for me to force you to give money to your neighbor? Yes, it is. Yeah. I, can only, I can only take – the politicians are not giving their own money. So since that has been in place for so long, I'm saying that that has weakened our moral compass and has really, has really spun us around and made us very dizzy thinking about morality. And that's what's happening. And they have utilized the black community uh, probably more than any other. And LBJ himself 
in the Great Society even stated that he was going to have black people voting for him and the Democrat Party forever. Amazing. I um, I I want to play this soundbite of this Canadian pastor. Have you seen it already? No, no, I have not. Uh, is Bill able to see it if we play it? Oh, you won't be able to see it, Bill, but you will hear it, where he is, okay. the cops showed up, and you can watch it later uh, um, on podcast, but the cops showed up and he, to his church on a Sunday morning. He ran them off. It was so amazing. Here's that sound bite. Get out of this property immediately. Out. I don't want to hear anything. Out of this property immediately. I don't want to hear a word. Out. Out. Out of this property, immediately until you come back with a warrant. Out. I don't care what you have to say. Out. Out. Out of this property, you Nazis. Out. <laughs> Do not come back without a warrant. You understand that? You're not welcome here. Nazis are not welcome here. They're coming to intimidate Christians during the holiest festival. Unbelievable. <laughs> And he ran them off a second time as well. And if I'm right, I may be off a little bit, but this pastor moved to Canada from a, a communist socialist society, a country, wherever he came from. And so he recognized what is going on because he lived in that environment. I don't think most, most Americans really recognize what's going on here. No, they do not. And, uh, you know, in, in, in Texas, I know, in uh, this area, a lot of people in the congregations are carrying. They're, they're conceal and carry. And so, um, you know, it wouldn't be just the preacher standing up and saying, get out. It would be the men in the congregation. Yeah. But, uh, you know, such as the shooting that took place in uh, Fort Worth, uh, Church of Christ in Fort Worth, a couple of, I guess it was about a year and a half ago, uh, where there was a, an armed man was able to stop the slaughter of Christian people by a man who came in and shoot them. And yeah. you remember that, how that went. So Amazing. Um, I want to ask you, oh, two things I want to ask real fast. And then I want to squeeze in a few calls for you, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, number one, I say that not all, not all, but most black people are cursed and not blessed. Am I wrong? Uh, I'm sorry, you cut out there when you the last portion of the question. I say that most black people are cursed and not blessed. They are cursed, generation after generation. Well, if you consider fatherless homes to be cursed, and I do, that would be true. Yeah. Uh, be, but it's it's because the government has has replaced fatherhood and man, apparently manhood in America and responsible Christian fathers. So since that is the case, it has been a curse to the black community in the black home since 75% of children are growing up without any fatherly guidance. Yeah. That's true. And it's not uncommon for black, young black folks and older too to be fighting in public, they're cursing, they're carrying on, they have no shame about free stuff, they hate their fellow man, and it's just going on from generation to generation. And when I read Deuteronomy 28, you read the blessings and you read the curses. All the curses are happening to the blacks. Right. Well, you know what? That's because the welfare system, as we have it in America, is not only unconstitutional, but it is also immoral. It's immoral because biblical values show us exactly what should be the case and uh, and how and how we should care for individuals, and and that is number one, we care for individuals on a personal basis, yeah. and or a congregational basis. It should never run up all the way to the federal government. Plus, in the New Testament, we have guidelines that are given uh, to for those for whom the church should care, and for those for whom the church should not care. In other words, there sh there should be guidelines, and those are only managed at a local level. So. The entire system that we have is unconstitutional. It's immoral because we've cast all guidelines aside. And so if a man doesn't work, neither let him eat, we've cast that aside completely. 
we uh, I've discovered that we don't have a Republican Party anymore, that the Republican representatives are no different than the Democrats. They pretend that they represent the Republican voters, but behind closed doors, they uh, agree with the Democrats when it comes to illegal aliens because they want cheap labor. Uh, they, uh, they are now allowing whatever you're into to be a part of the Dem- uh, Republican Party. You could be an LGBTQ person, and the Republicans don't deal with that at all anymore. They just want to maintain power for their stuff. And they never intended on making America great. If they had, they would have stood with Donald Trump, the great white hope, when he was there. But they secretly fought against him and saw him publicly. We, we have a one-party system now. Republican representatives do not represent we, the voters, anymore. Am I wrong by that? No, I mean, I, I do believe that there are some Republicans that are, that are strong conservatives, but they are certainly in the minority and they're not, they're not being uh, in the leadership positions of the Republican Party, generally speaking. That's true. At least that's not what we're seeing. Uh, we do have some that are very, very strong, very good, uh, but they are, they're roundly criticized, they're roundly condemned, they're harassed, they're threatened. And, um, you know, those, those men, such as the Rand Pauls of the world and Ted Cruz's, and we have a, a great representative here, uh, Pat Fallon. But you know, those those guys are are few and far between, and they're not they're not the ones that are driving the driving the train right now. Yeah, amazing. I want to go to the busy phones here, Bill. Before we go to the phones, tell the folks how to get your radio show, uh, riding for the Bible brand, and all the good things you're doing. Well, thank you, Jesse. You know the. The radio show, as well as writing for the Bible brand, are both on YouTube channels. They're both YouTube channels, and so you can subscribe to those. Writing for the Bible brand. It's an eight-minute Bible lesson. I'm sitting on the back of a horse and making Bible applications to what's going on in our culture. And then uh, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood, that's the radio show. It's also on YouTube, so it's a YouTube channel in and of itself, and you could subscribe. Uh, the website is AmericanLibertyWithBillLockwood.com, and if you go and help on that, that's great. Of course, uh, uh, there's a donate button there if you if you wish and care to do so. So those are the that's the radio show which is out of Wichita Falls, Lubbock, and Abilene. Uh, but that's the radio show its website as well as the YouTube channels. Well, I definitely want to encourage the people to donate because you're doing amazing work, and we got to start supporting one another. Those who are standing up for what is right and doing it with love, we got to support. So I do want the people to hit that donation bu- button there, make a donation to you. I want to encourage that. Thank you for that. Yeah. Let's go to your friend and my friend all the way from Dayton, Ohio. Mays out of Dayton, Ohio. Mays, you're on with Bill Lockwood. Hello, Jesse and Lockwood. Hi, Mays. Uh, Mays, how are you? Uh, Lockwood, all of that, uh, yes, that you just found out about black people, 75%. When did, it, when did black people start not having fathers in the home? What year? When did they start having problems in the home? Well, you said no fathers in the home, y'all talking points. What year did it start? Because I can well, name some men that have left kids that don't have, let them be a clean got a son. Let, no, hey, hey, May, let him respond. Go ahead. Okay. And then you can run okay. off at the mob. Hold on. I'm Go ahead, Bill. Well, okay. Through the 1940s and 50s, the black family was more or less intact. But through the 1960s and the great society, it began to fall apart as the government stepped into the father role and the fathers departed from the home. As a matter of fact, LBJ's great society purposefully, on purpose that is, removed the black fathers from the home. For example, they had a a project in St. Louis, Missouri, in which they disallowed black fathers to be in the apartments with the women. And so that's uh, that was what was taking place in LBJ Society. Okay, in LBJ Society, it looked like Do you, was, right? May you remember that, right? Because that is 100% that, true. I'm not, I'm not discussing that. I'm talking But you do that. remember that, right? Sure. Okay. But that's not what I'm saying. As I'm saying, a lot with no fathers in the home, so a man looked like him took the fathers out of the home, which he won't admit. And uh, So what now? What did you say? 
He won't admit. Admit Who what? Admit. He said LBJ took the fathers out of the home. The great the, the, LBJ took the fathers out of the home. And why did he do that? Because they wanted to control the blacks. And who is they? The the black so called leadership and the liberal white Democrats. Oh, you gonna call them liberal and all of these names? He's still Caucasian, regardless whether it's liberal, gay, straight, or whatever. They still the same, I mean, aren't they? So what? Hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I'm just gonna say that LBJ and the Great Society is a socialistic society. He was driving a socialistic train. Neo-Marxism, socialism, communism, whatever you want to call it, but that's what's going on. Been going on in the Democrat Party since the time of Woodrow Wilson. Really? You you put it on a Democrat, a Democrat yes, and a Republican are the same. So why you gotta use a party? Why can't you just use a uh, men, just like Caucasian men? Just use that word. Would it hurt you? Man, you're not making a sense. Well, you I, need to I stay off the pot. He keeps screaming how a Democrat, a liberal, and a Democrat. A but it was the, it was the uh, it black was, so-called civil rights leader who no encouraged it as well. Yes, and no blacks had nothing to do with it. Yeah, Jesse Jackson, Jackson and all those guys, they did no, have something to do with that. When Jesse Jackson and those others were small and, and, and not even grown and doing anything. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I know you don't, but I would do. He, in the name of Jesus, and in Jesus' name, the heathen, as I say it, <laughs> you're a heathen. <laughs> Regardless if you like it or not. And Jesse, you know that land on people. Hold on, man. Like Let me up. Hold on. Calm down. Go ahead, Bill. Okay. I'm not trying to wait. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, I don't understand the. Um, I don't understand that. I mean, is it, are she denying the facts of the case that the black man was replaced in the home by the LBJ Great Society? Is that. No, it wasn't. Here and here? I don't are, know. are you denying that that happened, May? No, I didn't deny that. I asked him why did who I told him, I asked him who took him out of the home. It, the black he man told you who did it. Somebody did it. He won't say it. He just said the Democratic so, Party. In other words, he said the Caucasian men went and disturbed the black community because they did not like the way it was going. They had they still have families. I don't know where you get the seventy five percent from because you got um uh, you, you got some um, got it you have got it that's exactly right. It's just it's just the same as Lee true? Harvey Oswald was killed. It's the same as Lee Harvey Oswald was killed by another man because he can. The, Oswald was a what they called a useful idiot. The that's right. Many but white would, communists and white neo Marxists absolutely use the black community to create a communist society. That is, you are. You keep talking about a communist. But like what I'm saying is like when Strong Thurman went into somebody other woman's oh, house. Oh, I know what Mays is doing, Bill. No, no, uh, no, no, no. Mays, I mean, hold on, Mays, to... hold on, Mays. Mays don't want Mays don't want the blacks to take any responsibility at all for their failure. They no. want to, she want to blame it totally on white people. That's no, what she's what saying, I'm... but she's no, trying to speak around it. She tried to speak around it so you don't mm -hmm. see what she's saying. She no, want to take away the responsibility of the of the blacks. <laughs> period. <laughs> Just you're funny, but as I'm telling Lockwood, when hold on, Mays. Was, let Bill respond to that. Can I say one thing and then he'll understand? No, what you I'm say saying. one. You okay. say ten things in in one second. Hold on. I'm explaining what I'm trying hold to say. Hold on, Mays. Go ahead, Bill. You know what I, I'm going to say? That communists have in writing for years and years and years and years stated very plainly in print over and over and over and over again that they plan to use the black community to drive a wedge in American society in order to create a Marxist revolution. That's what they've said. That's what's happening. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. So now can I explain what I'm saying? When Strong Thurman went into the latest house and she, he left her without a father in the house, Bill Clinton went into the latest house and he left his son without a father in the house. So what happened there, uh, Blackwood? Can you explain that one? The explanation is exactly uh, uh, the same. It's immorality. Really? Allegedly, Maze. You don't know if that's yeah, true allegedly. or not. You had a son on your show, Jesse, so what you mean allegedly? But you still, we don't have proof show. yet that that's have truly his son. Okay. Oh, we don't want to go there. So real life, will, as I say, right. the scripture in the Bible says... Hold on, Maze. We don't want to respond. Hold on. <laughs> no one is saying that white people don't commit immorality. No, no one is saying that. <laughs> no, you that, tell my father, no father's in the house. I'm black people that didn't have them in there, and some reason why. 
And, and, and Bill, uh, uh, May, well, anyway, black people were calling Bill Clinton black, so it's still the same. I don't care what they were calling Because they were saying that Bill left. Clinton was their first black president. Amazing. So, in, and the heathen is still talking, so you keep on with your heathen his ways, and you know what's going to happen. And Jesse, with the people with the land for 97 years that they've been trying to get back, that was taken from them, you don't think they're supposed to get their land back? With no, royalties? No. I didn't think you thought so. All right, thank you, May. I got to run. I do. I want to squeeze in Philip out of Texas, a first time caller for Bill Lockwood. Philip, welcome to the show. You're on the air with Bill Lockwood. Yes, uh, good morning, Bill Lockwood. And Jesse, thanks for having me on. Thanks. Yeah. I love your show, thank man. You. I have your book. Thank love you. You're a great guy. Thank you. Um, I don't, but the only discrepancy I see in your guys' conversation is um, I, I, I understand um, that. Uh, not having a family does lead to like this, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a terrible thing. But for black Americans, I don't see how you guys are skipping over, uh, what this government has implemented on the black family. I think you guys do a good job at skipping over the history of the black American plight in this country. What history is that? Uh, what are you talking about, right? Philip? <laughs> Check this out. I'm going to explain. Right after slavery, you release slaves. You rep, you pay this government paid reparations to slave owners, so you paid them for not having uh, that free labor anymore. You release the slaves, the black Americans, and you release them to nothing. So we had to build ourselves up. Right after that, you give land grants to other immigrants, white immigrants, uh, as well as white Americans. Black Americans didn't have access to that wealth. That's why you see what we see today. You also came this government, and it's not the government is not a white man. The government is this government. This government has been implementing policies on the black family since the beginning. I think you guys are skipping over that. How do you respond to that, Bill? Well, I was going to say, you know what? In part, I understand what Philip is saying, but that is the that's the very argument that our founding fathers utilized as they tried to get yeah. rid of slavery, and they wrote it right in the Constitution. Get rid of slavery no, again, 20 years. Also, hold, on, hold, on, Philip. He's cherry hold on, Philip. Hold that's, on. That's the very argument. They, that was the very argument that they used is to say, all right, we, you can't just shut it down all at once because then you have black communities that are not able to fit into society, so they wanted to phase it out over a period of time. That's that part is exactly what they argued on it, and that's why they wanted to go that direction. Um, that part I, I understand. Um, but as far as reparations, what 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 should we done as far as government, <laughs> since we government has okay. no authority to do so? What should government do okay. in response yeah. to it? Right. We I should think. do exactly. The government should do exactly what it does for uh, the Jewish community. What it's done for the Japanese what it's doing for the Native Americans, what we keep doing continuously for other groups every year. The, you, do you know how much money we send to Israel each year, but we don't take care of the destruction that the government has caused on the black Americans, not, not immigrants, not, not, Afri not blacks from Africa, not blacks from Jamaica, not blacks from Kenya, not blacks from uh, Haiti. I'm talking about black Americans let me Bill get a quick response, Bill, yeah. uh, Phil, because we're running yeah. out of time. Okay. We're gonna... I know. Go ahead, Bill. Go ahead, Bill. You know what? What he says is true. America has been involved in those things, yeah. but it has negative impact. The Indian Reservation, for example, yeah, may we pay reparations worst to place to go for, so for suicide rates, for high crime rates, for fatherless homes, for children out of wedlock, for, for uh, drug usage. The Indian Reservation is the worst place to go. That's what happens when government gets involved in doing things for a community, really, that the government should not be doing. And also, we have done that for the blacks for the last 70 years, and they've only gotten worse. Check out American Liberty with Bill Lockwood.com, folks. American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. I have two more hours to go. Bill, thank you so much. That was great. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Jesse. Good to be here with you, sir. All right. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe. 
and share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show for us. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. 